Greetings, friends. Randall and Eggie here with a holiday release of a program that we converted from Python 2 to Python 3 and indeed has been around since 1971. Affectionately dubbed as Python 2020, just because this was indeed such a memorable year, we've added some improvements. In addition to converting this code base to Python 3, we added a few updates that I think would make this play a little bit more enjoyable, let alone a lot more hackable for people who want to take and modify this code as a way of learning more about Python 3. Starting out at the main menu, in addition to the title change, you'll notice that we have some new capabilities as well as a new format for the menu. Well, we have the traditional nav calculations. We've now relegated nav to being only used to jump between different areas in the region. And we've also added a sub light speed capability for navigating around in any area. The torpedo, phaser, and shield commands remain the same, as do the short range, long range, and computer access tokens. And of course, we can always quit the game at this prompt simply by typing in QUI. The ability to navigate is a little different here, and it still might even change, because at this point, we're going to have from 1 to 64 sectors in our map, but we can jump at a speed of between 1 and 9. And of course, how fast we get there will deplete our energy accordingly. We'll be warping around the map later on, but taking a moment to check out our new sublight speed, you see that we have a new coordinate system for moving within any system or area, and we can go between A and H and 1 through 8. And if we activate our short range scanner using the SRS command, of course, we see we will always be starting out in the outer limits or area 64. What remains the same, of course, is that every time we are in our short range scan view, we'll see our shield capabilities, number of photon torpedoes we have, our energy levels, the area condition, of course, which will be green when there are no enemies to be seen, our star date, as well as a few new enhancements. For example, the area named and the hazards that we'll see in the region, let alone if we're docked with the star base or not. Unlike the SRS or short range scanners, moving to the long range scans, we'll see another almost traditional way of looking at things where rather than a very terse and cryptic long range scanner map, we have modified the long range scanner so as to see sectors that may be around us, as well as a more easily understood sector number, the number of Klingons using the Klingon identifier, number of star bases using the star base identifier, of course, the number of stars in each area located closely around wherever we are. Since we're in the outer limits, of course, we're going to see the previous eight regions. And since it presently looks safe at sector 60, we'll go ahead and engage our warp engines using the navigational command and warp to area 60 at a comfortably slow warp speed of one. Automatically seeing the short range scanners, of course, we notice the view of our area and engaging our sublight navigational system, we can go, in this case, from C1 to maybe H8. Easy enough to understand, but we can also use a one-space coordinate system to navigate, for example, to 1, 1, or maybe even sublight over to A. Eight. If we enter anything unexpected, of course, we will go back to see a summary of all of our Starship commands. In addition to our newfound ability to access our computer, so as to look at the location of where all of our star bases are. 
Since I don't know what's going on in Area 42, I'll add some energy to our shields. Of course, adding that amount of energy to our shields will limit the amount of energy we have available for other systems, for example, warping or our phasers. But having our shield set to 1,000 also eliminates the amount of damage we might suffer when unexpectedly warping in to a hostile system. Navigating to Sector 42 at a healthy warp speed of 5. You'll notice that I just got lucky enough to randomly dock with the star base, and that's not always the case. But our warp speed navigator will never allow us to randomly collide with anything in the region. But that doesn't mean we couldn't do that by mistake or deliberately on our own. Navigating with the sublight engines, of course, to H1. You'll see that we're no longer docked, but docking, as you'd expect, automatically levels up our energy to a maximum as well as fixes any damaged components as well as replenishes us with any torpedoes as required. Notice that our shields have dropped to zero, of course. So if we wanted to add some more, which is always a good idea when you're flying around in uncharted space, we can activate our long range scanners, which puts sector 42 right in the middle, as you'd expect now, and see that in 39, 38, 44, 45, just about all around us, we're surrounded by Klingons, and that simply happened randomly because each map is unique and generates automatically by itself. Warping over to Sector 45, you see it's a good idea to have your shields powered up because as we entered the section, Klingon took a pot shot at us, and the distance between us and the Klingon is a factor in choosing what weapons we're going to want to use. In this case, Torpedoes would be a good choice because they can fly right at the enemy, or we could use our phasers. And if we use the phasers, we'll be drawing the energy from whatever is not part of our shield. And unlike torpedoes, phasers will automatically target the enemy. Choosing a very small amount of energy, you see that our attack wasn't very effective, and their damage to us was a lot more than we did to them. So if we up the amperage a little bit to take a whopping 1,000, use a guarantee to destroy the enemy. And activating our short-range scans, of course, we see that is the case. And we'll probably want to do something about our depleting energy supplies by visiting a star base, so of course, activating a long-range scanner to find out where our next adversary awaits. Leave the rest of the gameplay up to you. I just wanted to give you the basics of how Star Trek 2020 has been updated and overhauled to make it a little bit more enjoyable to play. But more importantly, I would encourage you to take the code that we've created and modify, update, or even add some official capabilities to our source code nexus as available over on GitHub under Python 3 training. Of course, if you're looking for more inspiration on ways to learn Python, let alone some more projects that you might enjoy, until Facebook goes out of business, of course, feel free to join us on our Python 3 training group on Facebook.